Hey, look, explain this. The top versus the bottom, south. They was at war at one time, huh? Man, it, it, it always got war between the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. But like, it was the real war, like, you know, the guys, y'all side, this our side, we more flashier than y'all. Yep. You know what uh, I'm it, it's just, it was just, it was competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And it was about the resources. See, the bottom got LSU. So the young dudes was able to have more opportunity at stealing, hustling, you know, all type of things because they had mixed. The top, it was just poverty. So, you know, it was just poverty versus, you know, downtown, we both had downtown. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll try to go downtown would be our, you know, way up to escape poverty when the LSU was they way, but downtown connected to LSU if you go down on the left, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was just more about poverty and um, it got gangster, it get gangster at times depending on who's in the driver's seat. Like, like, like the bottom, mm -hmm. I would say is more gangster than the top. But I would say the top have more stand up people in it. Yeah. But the bottom has a culture of killers raising killers. Gangsters raising gangsters, you know, like pits, like pit bulls. Yeah. They breed them like that in the bottom. You feel what I'm saying? The top is just more like I'm. We ain't finna be pushed around from nobody. Like, but but like out of all the hoods and BR, I'm gonna say dudes from the south. They were like the real money givers, like from now on. Because of downtown and LSU. Yeah. Like the resource that I say, uh, you can come up from nothing when you got those type of resources and, and it was more poverty like and, and, and when you see like me bro I went through the crack epidemic in Detroit and then moved to Baton Rouge and went through the crack epidemic again mm -hmm. so just that that that's some hard to go through but anyway in Baton Rouge it was still kind of like friendly and neighborly yeah. and honorary and boys club and YMCA and Brett, that type of stuff going on. Like in Detroit, that was gone. So, you know, they still kind of sort of had that type of stuff going on when I made it here. But then once the full effect wiped all that out, it was just wasn't nothing left but, you know, you know, the gangsters. Yeah. Like it was like, you know, you, you now you got to fight for it. Once they made a way to get it, now you got to fight for it. Once the junkies start coming, once white people start pulling up on South 16, you had to run to the car and fight for the sale. And then it went from that to black people. And when it went to, when the white people stopped coming, that's when I stopped selling crack. Not to be saying I'm racist or nothing, yeah. but everybody else was kidding to me. Like everybody else in the hood, like from 94 to, what, say 93, 94, we had to sell to our own family members to survive selling crack. Man. Now, before then, 91, 92, you know, it was more like white people, people you don't know, people pulling up, you know, they made it a ritual to want to shine, but then you, you, you can't, I, I remember like, bro, like some of the hardest parts of my life when my family stole from me, because, you know, we was on two sides of the crack fence. I was on the selling and they was on the using. So, you know, that, 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 things like that made me say, nah, but I ain't gonna sell no more crack. I, I don't wanna be a crack dealer because mm -hmm. my family used that. I don't wanna sell nothing that my family used because you're gonna have to say, I might as well get the money, you're gonna sell it. And you're gonna, you gonna spend it anyway, I might well get it. So, you know, after too much of that, that it just eats up your conscience. I like Big when he did his movie. Yeah, so to uh pregnant woman, he's like, what's somebody gonna do to eat away? No. Man, it's not, nah, it's different. It's like, you know, crack make your mama happy. So, do you want your mama happy? Yeah, but not like that. Well, that's how I had to look at it. Yeah. Uh, so, it's either, I, I can't sell it to you, so I gotta give it to you. Or let you take it from me or sit it somewhere I know you can get it because I want you happy because I love you and I care about what make you happy. You mm -hmm. feel me? So it's a whole different vibe when it comes to that. 
So it ain't like Biggie and all that. Biggie and, you know, it's more like Pop. I think Pop Mama probably dabbed with crack. And it was just the effect. Yeah. It, it, it was like COVID. You know, when it hit, you know, some people catch it. Everybody couldn't withstand it. And, you know, the women's was weaker. So they fell victim. It was the men that did that. The men got the women on crack to, like you seen New Jack City when G Money said, I got this here right here, and woo, 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 woo. Yeah. But I know one thing the girl said all night. He talking about bad at that point. He ain't talking about crackheads. Wasn't no crackheads then. He talking about bad. So crack was designed to get bad and turn them from prom queens into prom fiends where they'll all night long for a rock and that's just what happened now i hope to, to god that none of my people my mom my aunts grandma cousins whatever ain't had to go through that and have more sense than that but that's the type of effect that crack had yeah. on young women they was young crackheads not old crackheads mm -hmm. young